All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Movement Church podcast, where our goal is to glorify God by helping people to experience, know, and follow Jesus well. My name is Jeff Shapiro. I'm the lead pastor of Movement Church. Very grateful that you're joining us today and excited about the topic that I'm going to be talking about today, which is this. What is the key to doing anything with excellence? What is the key to doing anything with excellence? Uh, One of the reasons I'm so excited about this topic is because at Movement Church, one of our core values as a church is excellence. And the way we define that is doing the very best that you can with whatever it is that you've been given, which means that excellence could look different from one place to another. And often what happens, whether we're talking about in the business world or in our families and relationships or even in the church, we look at people who are doing things at a really, really high level and we get discouraged because you're like, oh, I I could never do that. Or at least in this moment, I can't do what they're doing. No, no, no. Excellence isn't about doing what they're doing. It's about doing the very best that you can with what you've been given to work with in this moment. That's what excellence is. But the question is, how do we go from occasionally doing things with excellence to consistently doing things with excellence? That's a challenge all of us have experienced. Um, And and so I think that God has revealed something to me about this. And and more specifically, he's really reminded me of something about this because uh, it's not anything new. It's something that's been uh, accessible to us all along to understand through the scriptures. And and many of you are going to catch on to this right away. Uh, But God had to really remind me of this recently. And I'll tell you how he did it before. I tell you what it is. Um, So a few weeks ago, um, I can't remember if I was listening to a podcast or I was watching a video on YouTube or something like that, or maybe reading an article, but, but somebody somewhere said uh, something that was striking to me as a pastor. And what they said is um, essentially that if you want to preach with excellence as a preacher, if you want to preach with excellence, then what you need to do is you need to think of your preaching as an act of worship. You need to think of your preaching as an act of worship. And that that hit me in, in, in the best possible way because what I realized whenever I heard that, even though I sort of uh, deep down understand that to be true, Um, I needed to hear it consciously because I had been treating my preaching as something that I used to bring other people into worshiping God, right? To, To bring other people into worshiping Jesus. That was the purpose of my preaching. That is what I'm doing in preaching is bring other people to worship. But the reality is, is that as a Christian, my, one of the first things I need to be doing is I need to be worshiping God myself. And so when I finally realize that when I get in front of people, when I stand on a stage and, and, and start preaching, that I need to worship through my preaching, all kinds of stuff started to change for me. My preparation process started to change. I started to find myself um, just, just more passionately studying and diving into things. And, and um, the Holy Spirit seemed to be speaking uh, to me in fresh ways, which was very exciting. But, but when I got in front of everybody, after all the preparation was done, when I got in front of everybody, I found myself preaching more passionately. I felt like I noticed a difference in the response. So as I'm worshiping God through my preaching, I, I, I sensed a, a difference in the response, a positive, more positive response from the people who are listening and um, and I and it may not always be that way but the reality is that if I can get up there and I can worship God through my preaching and I can faithfully proclaim the word of God um, I know that I've glorified God in it and that's all I can do you know and so uh, it was a, a big eye-opening thing to me and and as I started to think about how it was affecting my preaching and thinking about it in terms of preaching I realized oh my gosh like this is the key to doing everything with excellence not just preaching, but literally living our whole lives as if every single thing that we do, whether it's something that seems super godly and spiritual or something super ordinary and mundane, the key to doing everything with excellence is treating everything we do as an act of worship. 
That's the key. And I think the Bible has a lot to say about this. And I'm going to give you uh, two biblical examples real quick. Uh, The first one is Cain and Abel. There's this story in the Old Testament about these brothers, Cain and Abel, who were the sons of Adam and Eve. And we're told that Cain became a, a farmer of the soil. He produced crops and that Abel, he became a shepherd. And we're told that when harvest time came around, Cain brought God an offering of some of his produce. But when Abel came with an offering, he brought the the first portions of a firstborn lamb, like the the best portions, the fatty portions of a of, of a firstborn lamb. And we're told that God accepted Abel's offering, but rejected Cain's offering. And later in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, the the writer of the book of Hebrews makes it clear why God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's. And this is what it says, Hebrews 11.4. It says, it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. So when Abel came to worship, he came to truly worship. That he stepped out in faith. And not only did he bring some of what God had blessed him with, but he brought the first and the best of what God had blessed him with. In our work in our relationships, in all of these things, we need to put forth our first and our best effort for God. And so I really believe that Abel, the reason he brought forth a more excellent gift was because he was treating it truly as an act of worship. Here's another example. In the New Testament, uh, the book of Colossians, Paul uh, writes a section of the book of Colossians specifically to Christians who also happen to be slaves. And this is what he writes. He says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything you do. Try to please them all the time, not just when they're watching you. Serve them sincerely. Now, here's the reason why he says all these things. He says, Because of your reverent fear of the Lord. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Now, just to be clear, just so we can focus on the the matter at hand, in this section, Paul is not advocating for slavery. He is advising slaves who are Christians on how, as slaves, they can live out this faith that they profess, how they can follow in the example of, of Jesus while they're in the position that they happen to be in at the moment, rather than thinking that they have to wait until they get somewhere else before they can follow Jesus. Okay. So that's the first thing we need to lay down. Um, But his advice to them is really powerful for us today, even as free people. He says, whatever you do work as if God himself is the one who has assigned you your task. Work as if you are working for God and not for people. In other words, treat your work as a form of worship. And I believe that if we will do that and we will do it consistently, I truly believe that excellence will just start to pour out of our work because we worship an excellent God and any worship that's worthy of him is also going to be excellent. It's going to be the very best we can with what we've been given to work with. With that said, what would happen if all of us had this attitude all the time? What would happen if every single one of us uh, began to work as if we were worshiping? began to work as if we were serving God through our work, whether it's doing dishes, cleaning up after the kids, uh, working in the office, uh, climbing trees, cutting down trees, landscaping, whatever your job is, serving coffee, whatever it is, what would change uh, if we were to all have this attitude that we were working for God and not for man? 
Well, there's a couple things I think would happen. One is our ordinary tasks would suddenly be infused with this great sense of purpose, right? Little things would all of a sudden become uh, so much more meaningful because they would be considered acts of worship and God would be glorified in those things, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Ordinary tasks would be infused with purpose. Another thing that would happen is our influence on the people around us, I think, would expand. Uh, One of the things that I personally believe is that if you are going to share Christ in your workplace, or if you're a Christian and you're out in in the workplace, one of the best ways that you can be a witness to what Jesus has done in your life and what he's done for for all of us um, is by working your hardest, by really working putting in the effort by really doing things with excellence and not uh, taking shortcuts and not being a person without integrity and, and really stepping up your game in the workplace because grace is free. Our salvation is a gift that was offered to us, to us by Jesus because he paid the full price for our sins. But, but the fruit of that that there is a, a gratitude and a sense of worship that has to come over us that should pour itself out in the form of, of hard work and effort because that's what Jesus did for us. And so I think that's a great way we can be a witness. We expand our influence uh, as Christians for Jesus uh, by working harder. Uh, another thing I think would happen if all of us had that attitude is we would find more joy, joy in our work. Many of us are miserable because we're working for the boss that we don't like. And maybe you have a good boss, but the reality is, is there's just many uh, aspects of pretty much any job that we just don't enjoy. And so I think that if we were to really start treating it as an act of worship um, and reflecting on who Jesus is and what he's done for us and, and pouring our hearts out through our work, I think that we would find that we would actually enjoy the work more because, again, it's infused with a greater sense of purpose. And then lastly, if all of us were to take this attitude that we're working for God and we're worshiping God through our work, I think that we would find that uh, just simply God would be glorified. He would be glorified in it because he's really called us to be living sacrifices. He wants every aspect of our lives, whether we're working or playing or eating or fasting or or praying or church going or whatever the case may be. uh, He wants us to worship him in everything we do, not just certain times and points during the week. And I believe that he would be most glorified if we would take this attitude. And so I encourage every single one of you, if you want to live... uh, excellently, uh, that you need to do so for the glory of God, that you need to treat everything you do as an act of worship. And I'm telling you, if you can do this, if you can keep who God is in front of you, it's going to change the way that you live, work, play, everything. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the content was helpful. I hope it was interesting for you. If it was, you can subscribe to the Movement Church podcast on Apple Podcasts, or you can follow Movement Church on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. That's all I've got for you. We'll see you next time.